archives of the Grand Rapids Public Museum. And I'm with Andrea. Mm -hmm. I'm the collections curator here at the Public Museum. Excellent. So what is a collections curator? Um, I work to help preserve the museum's collections and care for the museum's collections and also present it in various ways through our programs and exhibitions. Okay, and you're particularly involved in some of the textile collections? Right, yeah, so my area of expertise is um, clothing and textiles. And so we have a, a great collection here at our museum of both in those areas, um, including quilts. We've got some incredible quilts as well. And I know that at least one of those quilts was done by the members of the West Michigan Quilting Guild, which is pretty cool. Right on. We do have uh, some great quilts um, that have connections with the West Michigan Quilters Guild. Some members have donated over the years, and the guild has donated over the years. And in your collection, do you try to find quilts with a, a Michigan connection or Grand Rapids connection? Every, every artifact in our collection here at the museum pretty much has a West Michigan connection. So um, whether it's the donor or whether it was used or worn or made here, um, there's always some local story that goes behind the pieces. Excellent. And in front of us, we have an amazing Baltimore album quilt that I know was done by several members of the West Michigan Quilters Guild. And is this one that's potentially going to become a collection? Right on. This was um, offered by Dr. Sue Wakefield, who um, is a uh, community member here, and she um, offered this to the museum uh, to add to our quilt collection. Uh, as you can see, this Baltimore album, it's just absolutely stunning, and what's so incredible about it is actually it was made by uh, members, as you mentioned, of the Guild, um, and also other members of um, our community here. And so um, it's the stories really behind the makers that, that really um, we, we try to focus in on with our quilts. And I understand that this pattern is a, a reproduction of a quilt that is from the Daughters of the American Revolution. And I, I, so you have the tremendous historical significance of it with a West Michigan connection. That is very true, and um, you know, historically significant pieces. That's really what we want to we want to have here for our quilt collection, and also beautifully done. You know, these these quilters were clearly really skilled at what they've done, so it makes for a really great example. Fabulous. And where are we going next? We're going to go explore the collections. There's so much to see here at the archives. Um, it's just a really wonderful place, very eclectic collection that we're going to see, um, and with a long history. So the museum has been collecting since about 1854, and we are the second largest museum in Michigan. Um, we've got about a quarter of a million artifacts, so there's a lot to see. Wow, we have a treat ahead of us, so stay tuned. We'll go see our next spot. Here we go. Uh, so this is a kind of a cool artifact in our collection here at the museum. It is called the Toppler Holtz Electrostatic Generator Machine. Sounds complicated. Yeah, it is. It's kind of a complicated uh, machine, but it still works. Um, and it's it's from the turn of the century. It is a medical device. A medical device. What does it do? Um, do you want me to use you as a volunteer? Sure. <laughs> Just joking. Will it hurt? I'm Will it hurt? It might hurt. <laughs> okay. um, it is actually for treating baldness. Ah. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, you know, You don't okay. need, you've got really great hair. You don't need it. Okay. You don't need well, it. What, how does it work? <laughs> well, why don't we show you how it works? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to have you, Gina, hold on to this light bulb and not on the metal parts on the end. I'm going to have you hold right in the middle here. And what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to have you take your hand off there. Okay. You're going to scooch back a little bit and we're going to Stick this light bulb right in here towards the electricity. And now you can see this light bulb is just one of those regular fluorescent light bulbs. And this is a powerful piece of equipment yeah. making this work. Okay. Yeah. Pretty This I do recognize. This is a piano. Is it old? Right. This is a player piano. It's about around from the 1930s time period. Do you want me to play it for you guys? Absolutely. That'd All be great. Right.
Museum has so many different things from animals to quilts to replicas of furniture factories, but I saw this and I think I've heard stories about this from people who grew up in Grand Rapids. Tell me about this train. Sure, this is um, the Herpelsheimer's department store passenger train. Um, it was ridden by children um, who grew up here in West Michigan and it dates back to about 1949. That's when it first first started, um, but up until um, very recently, um, um, it was also in the city center downtown as well. So kids, um, kids my age even were in that thing. So if you grew up in Grand Rapids, I bet you rode in this, and the museum is saving it for uh, the other kids to see it at some point down the road. Right, kind of fun. are here in the textile room of the archive. Andrea, what are we going to see here? So we are in the biggest, best closet in West Michigan. We've got about 10,000 clothing and accessory pieces. Um, and also in this room, you're going to see textiles and world cultural artifacts. Um, one of our textiles is, that we um, really have a great collection of is our quilts. Um, and so we'll be showcasing some of those as well for you today. Do you know roughly how many quilts you have? I think it's about 200 quilts. Mm -hmm. And we're continuing to build on that collection too, so. Fabulous, and of course I know that one of them came from us, which is right. very cool. Right, yeah, so yeah, we've got some great West Michigan connections with our quilt collection. The makers, you know, and the people who have donated these um, always have that West Michigan connection. Do you have any favorite pieces down here? I do. We're really kind of standing in front of this. is one of my new favorite quilts. I love getting out quilts um, that I haven't really seen much of and used for our programming. And this is one of those examples that I haven't really um, gotten a chance to use much. And um, this one here is uh, a Victorian era crazy quilt um, from around the 1870s time period. You can just see the beautiful um, stitch work here, this feather stitching, um, all just painstaking done by hand and I really also like with, with these crazy quilts you see they integrate some of these little silk ribbons that were souvenirs um, and so this one here says Fremont on it it has a little picture of a gentleman there and um, you know just some really gorgeous brocades and silk fabric probably made by um, women who use these as scraps from their dresses or leftover pieces from from um, uh, dresses that they were making The Grand Rapids Public Museum has about 200 quilts from all different time periods dating back to probably as early as the mid-1800s. There are also an amazing collection of clothing here at the museum. We've got about uh, 10,000 pieces of clothing and accessories dating back to the 1700s. And the areas of clothing that we have are everything from um, party dresses to um, military clothing, um, everyday dress and functional sportswear clothing. We have wedding dresses and baptismal gowns, lots of children's clothing and shoes and hats and pretty much anything you can imagine. All through the decades as well, um, you'll see 1960s uh, is a big area we have but also earlier pieces dating back to um, the 1700s. Artifacts from the Grand Rapids Public Museum are actually mostly all donated to the museum. That's what really makes this collection so eclectic, is that the community um, has really worked to identify what they feel is, is special and that they want to give to the museum to preserve. It makes for a really incredible collection with lots of variety, and we have lots of great local stories behind these pieces. I got a preview of a little special project that Andrea is working on here at the archives. Yeah, so we're actually, we've got a really great project going on here um, relating to our clothing collection. We're actually working um, on digitizing, so photographing the, the collection, which is about 5,600 pieces that are going to be worked on during this project. And it's the, all thanks to an award that we received, um, the Institute for Library and Museum Services awarded us a grant um, just recently. And so for the next two years, we'll be working to 
completely photograph and also provide better preservation for the clothing collection. And it's all available on our website. So if anybody's interested in checking it out, you can go to grpmcollections.org. That's the museum's online database. And all these pieces will be immediately available through the website. That's fabulous. So as you're taking them, you're adding them to the, the website immediately. Right, yeah, it's available immediately. There's great high resolution photos so you can explore the collections in greater depth. Amazing. And aren't the quilts on there also? There are lots of quilts in there too, so you can check those out. There's photos as well for the quilts. Amazing. And, you know, one of the things that quilters love is the preservation of quilts. And Andrea is doing a fabulous job helping us save not only the clothing, but the quilts and the other textiles that you've been able to collect. So thank you for that. Thank you. It's it's a really, you know, clothing and textiles is a fragile asset for the museum um, that it's it's really been on our priority list to make sure that these clothing collections and the textile collections are well preserved for the future. Um, we, we've got some great exhibits and programs always going on here and having collections that are in good condition and, you know, preserved for our community is, is really important to us. A lot of people don't know that this is an amazing collection to the point that people all over the world call Andrea to talk about her textiles. It's true. We do get a lot of, uh, I, ch I check our website hits and we get a lot of hits from people around the world. Um, now that we've been creating a lot more digital content in our database, um, it's just making the collections really more, much more accessible for people. That's fabulous. Well, thank you very much and thank you for allowing us to tour the archives. This is fabulous. Tours. Today we are at the Grand Rapids Public Museum where we are celebrating Quilt Day at the museum. We have a lot of people to talk to and a lot of great things to see, so let's take a look. You know, in addition to doing On Point TV, Nancy wears a lot of other quilt related hats. Nancy, tell me what other things you're involved in. I am the current president of the West Michigan Quilters Guild. It is an organization that has been around for almost 40 years now. Um, and our goal is to educate the public and artists about the art of quilting. Another part of our goal is to preserve the not only the interest and the artistry of quilts, but the actual quilting items themselves. And so we have partnered, a very close partnership with the Grand Rapids Public Museum. So along with being the president of the West Michigan Quilters Guild, I'm also the chairperson for the Grand Rapids Public Museum West Michigan Quilters Guild combination. So we work very closely with them. One of the things we do is the event here that you're seeing today, which is Quilts at the Museum, where we're just trying to bring quilts to the public. And some of the people here are obviously members of the West Michigan Quilters Guild. How many members does the guild have? The guild at this point, I think it was 433 members and we go up a little bit and down a little bit. We're very active in the Grand Rapids community. One big part of what we do at the Grand at the West Michigan Quilters Guild is our charities. Our charities are, our main charity is the Spectrum Neonatal Center Ties That Bind. So if you ever have, know somebody that has a neonatal baby that's in the NICU at the Spectrum Neonatal, they actually will be able to go to the quilt closet and get a quilt to put over their baby's incubator and then they get to take that quilt home with them. We also raise approximately $14,000 a year that we donate to the Ties That Bind, which is an organization used by the um, social workers at the NICU unit to help families in need while they're having to travel back and forth and take care of their baby that's in the NICU. Um, we also work with hospice. We work with Santa Claus girls. Um, there's a lot of different organizations that we work with and one of them is the Grand Rapids Public Museum. And I know we've done different events over the years with them and this is an annual event. Have you, have you been doing this for a long time? Um, we have and it generally used to always be on National Quilting Day but National Quilting Day has changed a little bit because the organization that started it and it landed on a strange day. So today we're calling it Quilts at the Museum. 
Oh, and this is marvelous because not only can we see the exhibit, but we're seeing both uh, for young and old. They have a quilt design exhibit that we'll be looking at a little bit later. But well, Nancy, thank you very much. I appreciate this. You're welcome. Have a great day. Boy, you ladies are cranky today. What's up? It's fun. <laughs> And these are antique hand-cranked sewing machines. I'm here with Esther Taylor and Shar Koenig. Esther, can you tell me a little bit more about your machine? Well, my machine was actually originally an electric, made in the 1970s, and I took the motor off and put a hand crank on. Oh, that's amazing. Did you do the work yourself? I did. It's actually very, very easy, and there's videos on YouTube telling anybody who wants to do it how to do it. And why do you like hand-cranking? The nice thing is that if you're hand cranking with friends, you can carry on a conversation while you're sewing because they make very little noise. Oh, that's great. And, and with the hand crank machine, can you do most of the things you can do with a regular machine? With mine, it can, I can because it has zigzag stitch and it has cams to do some decorative stitches. Um, the older machines mostly are only straight stitch machines. Oh, this is amazing. It looks like a lot of fun. that our little quilt guild in, in Holland is working on is these little wool table rugs. And you buy these little uh, patterns and they've got all the instructions inside. And you trace the design on fusible web, cut it out, fuse it on there, and then you take your threads and stitch around the design. And wool quilting, that was popular back in the day as oh, well, was Like the wool penny rugs. And this is just a little modern version of the, the penny rugs. Okay, and, and so that points out another wonderful thing about quilting, is there are a lot of different styles that people oh, can be involved absolutely. in. Absolutely. And what's attractive about these is you can just take them with you. They're small projects, and, you can, and people that like to do handwork, waiting in the doctor's office. Or, or at the museum. The museum, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, Mary. Well, thank you very much for showing us these, and we'll catch up with you in a little bit upstairs. Thank you. And here I'm with Mary Ellen Gedras. And Mary Ellen, you have real bright fabric and real muted fabric. Are those going together? Um, no, they're two separate projects. In the front, I have some nine patch squares. Um, these I put together on my hand crank machine. Um, I'm thinking of making a quilt, um, possibly a quilt for um, donating to the show. Yeah. Well, as one of the co-chairs of the show, I highly recommend that you do that. <laughs> and then what about the bright fabric? The bright fabric I'm putting together, and these are going to be cut up and made into pot holders. Oh, that's marvelous. So really, with your hand crank machine, you can do just about anything. Yeah, just about anything. Smaller projects mostly, not nothing too complicated, but it forces you to slow down and just kind of meditate on what you're doing. And, and enjoy it. Yes, and you can still talk at the same time. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mary Ellen. person I'm talking to is Donna. And Donna, you've got some baby quilts here. What are you working on? I'm working on a Neil Natal quilt. Okay, and I know that the West Michigan Quilters Guild makes quite a few quilts for the Spectrum Hospital Neil Natal unit. Do you have any idea how many? Uh, last year we donated over 1,300. 1,300 baby quilts. So, I mean, that is amazing. I have been to the quilt closet at Spectrum Hospital, and they have quilts stacked high. And um, how do the parents, do they assign quilts, or do they get to pick? Uh, they get to pick. Uh, I think, that, I think the, um, the, the nurses there, you know, pick out a couple, and then the parents get the final choice. How amazing. And I've heard some stories about how um, sometimes the moms will maybe have a quilt for their baby, but then take that quilt at home at night so that they can be with their baby at night while the baby's still in the hospital. So you're really doing wonderful work. And, and is this a small committee or who, who makes them all? Uh, the members do. That's great. And there are several groups that get together. I know I'll be sewing some neonatal quilts tomorrow with a group of friends. Well, thank you very much, Donna. Thank you. The next 
next person I'm chatting with is Pat Harkins. And Pat's quilt actually has quite a story behind it. Pat, tell me what you're working on. Um, well, I'm working on some blocks that were orphan blocks that got donated to um, the worker bee at the Queen Bee Quilt Shop. And we decided that the best use of them would be to put them into a quilt and then raffle it off at our guild show. Oh, that, that's amazing. Now, these quilts are special. Everything is hand embroidered. And I understand that these just sort of got found. So you really don't know who did all the stitching. No, and they're from the early 90s. 1990s. So we, we really don't know where they came from, who did them. They, a lot of them have states on them, some of them don't. Um, but we know when the time period is because a couple of them had actually dates on the. That's amazing. And so uh, sadly, somebody did all this work and, and then lost the, the work that they were working on. But the work itself lives on because somebody will have an opportunity to win this quilt and have the, I mean, this is really nice handwork. It is beautiful handwork, um, and we're, we think maybe it might have been a group that were the different members from the group sent in the blocks. Oh, that's great. Well, it is beautiful, and I look forward to being able to buy raffle tickets for it at, at the Guild Show. They do that. They do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pat. Oh boy, man, this is fun. So this is this is a paper quilt, isn't yes. it? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm here with Claudine and Michelle. And what are you guys doing here today? We're trying to introduce kids to their first quilt square. We're taking a piece of paper with a pattern on it and giving them pieces of fabric. And they're gluing their fabric to the paper to get an idea of what a quilt looks like. So they're making their first quilt square. That's amazing. And so kids get an opportunity to learn about light fabric and dark fabric. We met Mary Voss a little earlier downstairs, and now we are upstairs in the museum near the museum's quilt exhibit. Mary, tell me a little bit about it. This is organized by West Michigan Quilters Guild. And the quilt behind me was a quilt that was made by the members in honor of their 30th anniversary in 2007. And I can see that there are signatures on, on the quilt. Are you on there? I am, but I think I'm behind the sign. <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> but anyway, we were, we were handed out uh, patterns with instructions to use bright colored fabrics and to put our name in the little center square, which had to be white. Now, and this is a great partnership between the museum and the West Michigan Quilters Guild, isn't it? It sure is. And we've had a long-term uh, liaison with the um, museum. And do you actually get a chance to work with the, the quilts that are in the collection? We have. Uh, we've worked with documenting the quilts. And I think Andrea will tell you a little bit more about the results of that and how those quilts are available online for search. And lately, we've been helping her with rolling the quilts. Previously, they were put in boxes, but now they found out that it's easier to have them be rolled so they don't get the crease marks. And so we've been helping her do that. That's great. And I know that um, members of the West Michigan Quilters Guild still participate with the museum regularly, uh, again, to preserve the heritage of quilting, don't they? That's correct. And not only do we come here physically to help, but financially also. Well, and I know that the quilt was made nine years ago, so we're coming up on our 40th anniversary, aren't we? We sure are. <laughs> Do you think we should make another quilt? Um, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, great. Uh, the guild is, uh, had been in existence, I think, for almost 40 years. And it is one of the largest guilds in the country, isn't it? it? Is. We have close to 500 members. And nationally known quilt speakers. I, I've heard some amazing mm -hmm. speakers at the guild. Yeah, yeah we have. Great. Well, if you're interested in quilt history, your local museum is a wonderful place to start. Chances are they're going to have some exhibits or be able to tell you where you can go to learn more. So enjoy looking at the history of a quilt that perhaps you own or the one that you might find next. Andrea Melvin and Andrea is the curator collection curator at the museum yes yeah so Andrea how long have you been involved with this uh, exhibit 
Well, yeah, I've been here at the museum for about six years, and um, this is a wonderful changing exhibit we have here at the museum. It's one of our permanent exhibitions. We change out a quilt um, periodically to showcase the variety that we have here in the collection. It's quite a huge collection we have here at our museum, almost 200 quilts. Oh my, and what is the oldest quilt you have? Oh goodness, the oldest quilt I think is probably around the 1820s. Okay, and so over the years as you've been involved, I'm sure you've learned more about the different styles and the history of quilts, but is there a tool for the average person to go research their own quilts? There is lots of ways you can explore the museum's quilt collection. First off, you can come visit the museum. We've got a great interactive quilt uh, program here that's set up in our QS for Quilts exhibit. Um, you can explore all the different types of quilts, all the different styles and uh, time periods and history behind those quilts. Um, also, you can, uh, on our website is a great tool. Um, it's our online database, and that can be something that you can um, explore the collections using. So if somebody had an old quilt, would they be able to go see and look for pictures of quilts that are similar? Is that might a way they would start to research? That's, that would be a great way to do it. Most of them have been digitized as well, so you can see a, an electronic picture uh, of the quilt and some of its details. It's a great way to sort of compare what you have at home. Um, you can also read a lot more about the history behind those individual quilts and, and learn maybe more about your own through that tool. That's amazing. So people are always finding quilts either that they have in their own attic or maybe that they found at garage sales and the value of them can be quite something. So if you do have an older quilt, uh, do some research, read a book, visit some websites. But make sure that if you have an old quilt that you learn a little bit about it to find out if you have something valuable. today's tour, I learned a lot about quilt history, the people involved, and how a partnership between a quilt guild and a public museum can be so beneficial to both parties. So I hope you've enjoyed this On Point tour, part of On Point Tutorials, Tips, and Tours. Thanks for watching.